Hello, welcome to this live streamed playthrough of Final Girl uh, that is being streamed live as I'm saying this on Twitch, but later uploaded to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. The chat is on screen so that you can see who I'm talking to when I'm talking to them. Uh, and that's basically what you need to know. This stream is sponsored by Van Ryder Games, who published this game, Final Girl. So a big thank you to them as well for that. We today are playing, I'm really excited because we're playing the first uh, scenario that I've gotten, the first box set, the first film cassette tape. It's not a cassette tape. The first VHS, I don't know what they're called. The first story of season two that I've been able to check out, and I'm really excited about that. So let's just um, show it to you. Here we are, final girl. I have the whole setup. Komarowski in the chat is saying, YouTube, do not believe her. She's just talking to herself. Not nice, Komarowski. <laughs> I mean, I am basically talking to myself. So we're here, we're playing with the intruders at Wingard Cottage is what we're doing here. So let's talk a little bit about this setup and the new rules. And then I'll tell you a little bit about my final girl. I've chosen Jenny who comes with this box. Um, and the other one who comes with this box is, where is she? I can't, the, the card isn't handy, but she's cool too. I just chose Jenny because I really like her special powers. So. Here we are. <laughs> Horniston chat is making me laugh. Wait, we're live? Puts on pants. It's always good to wear pants if you think people are going to see you. Unless you, you know, whatever. Don't want to, that's not your jam, then fine. So here we are playing with the intruders. Let me read to you a little bit about the intruders. Hello, Terry Ann. How are you? All right. <clears throat> this is what our little lore document here with our special rules. This is what it says. The intruders believe they're doing holy work, freeing souls from a pitiful existence in our world, one consumed by greed, ambition, lust, and jealousy. In their eyes, the rich, successful, and well-to-dos are the ones most suffering from this sinful way of living. They feel it is up to them to relieve these people of their worldly burdens. So they're doing us a favor by killing us. Um, So that's, that's where they're at here. And uh, basically, here's some special things. You can see, look at this. I've got multiple piles of health happening here on the side. There are three killers. They have names. Trish is this one. Baghead is this one. You can see right there, Baghead. And Zeke is this one. I'll be honest, which one of these? Okay, this is Zeke and this is Trish with the like skull on her face. So that's a whole thing. So this game actually comes with, this box comes with two additional killer meeples. Uh, full disclosure, I can't find mine. I'm not sure what happened. I can't find mine. So I have pulled a black and a white meeple from two, a different game to represent them on my board here. <laughs> so, uh, there you go. I'm like, I'm glad chat is immediately on the side of our killers here who've all just said, uh, that sounds legit. Let's help them out. Uh, yeah, you got me to your cause. No fight here. <laughs> Trish should use more moisturizer. Or she's just all, all bones there. Diabetes Industries. Hello. Says, I have a serious issue and suggestion for this channel to make it more successful. We need cat videos and replays when the cat cam is offline. Your suggestion is taken under advisement. Thank you. Uh, okay, so there will be an active killer each time we have to do the killer phase. So here's how this is going to work. Um, the active killer is going to change, and so there is a symbol on some of our cards. You can sort of see here this little K symbol, and whenever that happens, we're moving our active killer token up and down so we know which one is actually taking the action. And so only, typically only one of these killers is going to act at a time. There are going to be some cases where we're gonna flip over a card and it's gonna tell us all the killers act. Uh, but normally it will just be them one at a time. They each have a six health and a health 
an extra health token to see whether or not they actually die. So there, there, there's like 18 at least health we're dealing with right here, which is kind of scary. Um, <laughs> it's kind of scary. And here you can see actually all killers are going to target and attack if they can on their killer phase, which is a little bit, that's a little bit rough. Um, the horror starts at three, so that's not terrible. A lot of times when we've played, it starts at four, so that could be worse, but I have a feeling it's gonna, oh yeah, it's gonna go up very quickly. After their first kill, it like goes up a lot. So this is kind of, aye, you know? Um, Another thing that happens if, if we deal damage to one of the killers, they immediately become the active killer. So that's one way that the active killer changes. Uh, what else here? Oh, when there's panic, uh, the victims panic uh, if they're in a space with any of the killers, even if it's not the space where one of them got killed. So they will panic. Anyone in a space with a killer will panic if we have a panic phase. Minor dark powers apply to all the killers. And uh, yeah, that's basically what's going on with them. So we got three of them and they're gonna be doing stuff. Let me just double check real quick. Now, what else we have that's going on here that's pretty cool. Hi, Nerdsplaining, it's nice to see you here. Is at Wingard Cottage. Let me tell you a little bit about Wingard Cottage. Wingard Cottage is a perfect getaway nestled in the woods on the edge of a pristine lake. The cottage has been in the family for generations, and although it has changed over the years, it still has the same charming quality as when it was first built. Many special events and relaxing getaways have been hosted here. Unfortunately, it has also seen its share of tragedies, horrible events that have plagued the family throughout the home's history. Best not to dwell on the past, though, for surely your stay will be peaceful and carefree. <laughs> Oh, so uh, some things that are specific. So the rooms in the house are considered inside rooms because there'll be some cards, I guess, that we might flip over that are inside or outside. Um, the shed, I believe, counts as inside the garage and the, uh, the boathouse here. Uh, and then all the other spots, the porch, the driveway, the lake, all these other spots are outside spots. Uh, you can also see in some of these, we have a new action we can take that we don't need an action card for it. In some of these spots, you can see these images that look like little resources. If you were stopped in that space, not moving through it, but actually stopped, you can pick up that resource from our little crafting area. So we have four here. One is discarded tools. Where can we pick the discarded tools up from? Right here in the garage. That makes sense. We've got rope, which we can get from there is a rope. The boathouse has rope. We've got nails, some of that's in the shed. We've got wood, which is in a variety of places. And once we have those, we can put them in our backpack. And then if we have the materials we need, we can craft by discarding those items uh, into making these different things. And these I chose, uh, these are the four we always have of the materials, but then the crafted items are four randomly pulled from a crafted item deck. Hey, Icarus. Hey, A. Pantaloni. Hey, R. William. Mr. Tabletop, hello. So here's what we can uh, craft in this game, because this will change in different games. We have a nail gun, which requires nails discarded tools, and then two time on our um, on our time track over here. We also have a nail trap, which is wood, nails, discarded tools, and two times. Two time. A snare, wo rope, wood, and a time, and the obliterator, which would be really great to be able to do, but it takes a lot. Wood, rope, discarded tools, nails, I mean, basically everything, and four time. But look, if we get it, it can do three damage in one go. That's pretty good. Uh, it cannot be used to modify reaction cards, though. And all movement is reduced by one. Ooh, and if I use it, see, they're like trying to make keep it from being OP. When used, receive one damage for each one in your final horror roll result. So that's risky, but it can do a lot of damage, which would be great. So that's a thing we can do. We can do crafting in this scenario, which is 
pretty cool. Uh, let's look a little bit quickly at Ginny, our final girl. So here she is. Uh, we obviously have our six different things we can do as we uh, rescue victims. We have two opportunities to lower the horror. We can gain some time back. We can move a space. We can heal. We can take the guard reaction card. That's cool. The reason I chose her is because I thought that her, if we are able to get all the victims, which would be very helpful if we did, her special power is awesome. So listen to this. Choose two of the following that will apply to all results when resolving that action for the remainder of the game. We get two of these things. Look, at the, Listen to these buffs. You get move plus one space when resolving a walk for the rest of the game. Plus one health when resolving a short rest. Plus one damage when resolving weak attack. Plus one horror reduction when resolving focus. And you get to choose two of them. And they're over there for the rest of the game. That's so cool. So I'm really hoping that we get Okay, I think with all of that being said, I think we start playing here um, and see what we can do to deal with three separate killers. <clears throat> there we go. Let's start. So our hand of our first hand of cards is just our um, our freebies, our free actions here. So, oh, our scenario is called fishing trip. I didn't really point that out, um, but our setup here is fishing trip. So that's what I set up there. We're over here in the in the bathroom. I think is what this is saying. Where we should start. I couldn't quite tell if it was bathroom or bedroom, so I've decided the bathroom. Um, which is kind of a funny place to start the game. We're just like in the bathroom. <laughs> <sighs> let's take a look at let's take a look at the lay of the land here we've got so up here we have in the boathouse our top item is mysterious pills which lets us heal or lower the horror in the shed we can find a blender which does a lot it can only be used in the house one time but it does three damage that's hilarious to me and then we have a knife in the garage I wonder if we should try first. Maybe we can come down here to the laundry room, head to the garage, try and pick up some tools and drop these people off in the driveway. I wonder if that's like the first start. Because we want to like rescue people and we also want to gather some materials, I think. So I think that's going to be the way to go. Is coming down here trying to grab these people into the garage and over here. We won't be able to do it all at once, but I think that's the good first plan. So that means first we need to walk. And we're going to need to. Also, if we go to the garage, we might be able to get the knife, which could be cool, but we'll need a search card for that. So the first thing to do, I think, is to walk. Let's see, let's see what we can do with walking. So the first thing we're going to do is walk, which I've said three times now. So right now, because the horror level is at three, we're rolling two dice. Hello, wall in the machine. We've just started here. This is a new map, Camelisk. This is from season two. So we're at the Wingard Cottage and we're fighting the intruders and it's one of the season two boxes. Okay. Oh my goodness, what a roll to start us off. Two successes, I that's it. I will not roll that well for the rest of the game. So that means I can walk up to two spaces and I just lose one time, but that's pretty brilliant. So I'm gonna go from bedroom to laundry room where I'm gonna pick up these two lovely people right there. So that's where I've gone. And I'm gonna hope to take them into the garage with me, which so I think we should You can't split your movement, can you? I wonder if we should lower, lower, try to lower the, um, 
the horror level with our focus card and then just collect things for the next turn might be the way to go what do you mean not a door oh my gosh you're absolutely right <gasps> shut down her why 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 do you have to point out the rules to me you're absolutely correct there is no door from the bedroom into the laundry room oh no which means i go one two Blech. Just stay in the bathroom and hide. <laughs> That's actually how you're the final girl. You just like hide somewhere and wait for it to all blow over. <laughs> well, boo for that. But that's all right. So we've come out of the bathroom. It's fine. <laughs> there goes that plan. Let's try and focus anyhow. And then we'll see. Maybe I'll try and walk again or maybe I'll just try and collect more cards. Just run through the wall Kool-Aid man style. Why not? All right. Oh, yeah. So let's try and focus. So again, we're rolling two dice, and we're hoping to lower the focus because if we can get into this nice green zone, we'll have three dice, and that would be nice. Couldn't you move two with two stars? Oh, that's right. I didn't start in the, in the bedroom. I started in the bathroom. Yes, I can move two. I've just now confused myself with my um, mistaken movement. So I go bedroom foyer foyer whatever okay good call everyone good call so really i'm as far away it's fine <laughs> it's fine it's fine <gasps> what the heck is happening i just rolled two successes again this is gonna take a turn at some point i'm very nervous about how well the dice rolls are going so far yeah to the casino while in the machine this is a reskin, basically, of Van Ryder Games Hostage Negotiator. Mm -hmm. It's the same, and you'll actually see on my player mat, there's a misprint where they've accidentally put images of the Hostage Negotiator dice on here instead of the Final Girl dice. <clears throat> but yeah. Okay, so two successes means we get to lower the horror by one, and we gain two time, which is pretty amazing. Are you sure there are failures on your dice? There normally are, yes. Yes, there normally are. Thank you for that follow, Cathode Wave 2. Okay, so now, I think we walk again. This might be silly. Or do I focus again and wait for the next turn? If we can just get it down, as soon as they kill, we're going up to. Okay, I'm going to try and focus one more time. And then I'm just going to wait. I'm going to hold on to these cards. And I'm going to try and spend. I'm just going to try and load my hand up. So let's try and focus one more time. That's a little more like it. Okay. So I can spend two cards to convert this into one success, which will let me move this down. And I'll lose a time, but then I'll still be at six, so that's okay. I can, I'm going to spend my weak attack and my short rest, because I don't really need them, uh, to turn this into a success. So now I get to move this down one, and my time goes down to six. So next time I roll the dice, I'll have three. Shoot, it would be so dumb to just get everything out of my hand right now. But this is what, that's, I mean, this is what we're doing. Go big or go home. I'm rolling three dice. I would like to take advantage of it before they kill someone and move the horror up again. So we're just going to try and walk and grab these people and take them into the garage. <sighs> well, I can't do anything about that because I have no cards in my hand. So I cannot discard cards to turn those into a success. So, boo, there we go. That's more like it. A complete fail, even though we rolled three dice. Well, it was worth a shot. That's it. I spent all of my cards, which maybe isn't the best way to have started this game off, but here we are. Yeah, there it is. There's the dice luck. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Oh, my gosh. Oh, goodness. So now we do my prep phase, which means we have six time to spend to grab cards out of my, oops, sorry everyone, out of my little tableau here, my little card shop. Well, we know we're going to want to try and search, so I'm going to spend two to grab a search. 
two to grab a sprint. And then two to get both close calls. So that'll be my hand next round. I've probably not done myself any favors by immediately being like card poor at the start of the game. Uh, but here we go, here we are. So all of these go back into their spot there. I'll be able to grab them next turn. This is my hand for next turn. And now we have the killer phase. So let's see what the, oh, we never flipped an event. Oh, I've ruined the beginning of the game. We're supposed to start the game with an event, everyone. We should just start all over. We should start all over. Let's see what this is, another way out. Where are the boat keys? Here's our boat token. I know, climbing day, and I've, I've ruined it. I've ruined it all. <laughs> Place the boat token in the lake and the neighbor in the family room. Okay, I think we're gonna be okay. So here's our neighbor. The boat is in the lake. Oh my gosh, look at the lake over there. Uh, the neighbor has the keys to the boat. When the neighbor is on the lake front, they and up to three other victims on that space may exit and be saved. <gasps> Whoa. So if I can gather them up with some other people and get them to the lake front, which is right here. Really, I just need to gather him up and get over to the lake front where these two people are. Then those people will be saved. Now, if that had come out, I probably would have started with a very different plan. Than what I'm doing now but honestly I can pivot I can pivot right now okay so that we don't have to retcon too much we're not but for anyone watching this who doesn't know how to play the game I should have pulled this immediately this is like the first thing you do in the game is pull an event and then start playing so I did mess that up and I apologize now we'll flip a terror card Oh, first we resolve the killer action, and then we draw the tarot card. It's like I've never played this game before, even though I have many times. So, luckily, oh, it would help if I showed you. It would help if I hit the right buttons on my stream deck. She is the wacky neighbor. She's always late. Thank you, Ardan Henry, for justifying my mistake with theme. I like it. Exactly, Icarus. <laughs> neighbor just came in fashionably late. That's why. So all killers target final girl or victim, no, uh, depending on who's closer, and then they attack. They're not in a space with anyone, so they won't do anything yet, which is really, really good. So now we can flip our terror card here and see what happens. Oh my God, what is happening to us? That's what it says. If there are no victims on the board, discard this card and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, oh boy. Now they do stuff. Oh no. Okay, so here's how this works. Uh, but the thing doesn't. So the same active killer is going to do both of these actions because this does not have the symbol to move to change the active killer so one killer trish our red meeple is going to do both of these actions now if there was a symbol on here to change the active killer that like k then we would switch to the next killer and then they would do this action um but because that's not on here trish will do do it twice so trish our red meeple here uh is going to Target a victim, move, and attack. And then target a victim, move, and attack. So this is bad. So right now her move, let me show you on the, uh, on the board. Her move currently is one. So she is closest to the boathouse and the lakefront. So first she's going to move one targeting victims. So these are the victims that are closest to her because otherwise she needs to come this way and that's further away. So she's going to go here. There's no one to attack because she's not in a space with anyone. But now she is because she's going to target a victim, move and attack again. So 
death is going to happen and we're going to lose, we're going to go up on the horror and all blight. So the question is, will she go to the boathouse or she'll go, she'll go to the lakefront because that's where there are more victims. So when there is a tie for distance between victims, you go to the one where there is more. If there's still a tie, you kind of choose thematically how you want it to act. Um, this is not great because there goes our little lakefront setup for saving people. So Trish moves into here. And they go, oh, no. And she's going to attack. It only takes one hit to kill a victim. So one of these is immediately dead. Not great. The bloodlust goes up one, <laughs> which we'll resolve here in a minute. Uh, and then in the panic phase, these two will panic. Uh, I say we vote Trisha off the island. Yes, goodbye, Uncle Bob. Thank you for coming on this fishing trip, but it's over for you. Oh, no. So now we resolve what's on our bloodlust track. So now our horror level goes up twice. All that work to try and get three dice, and we didn't even really benefit from it, did we? One, two. So now we're back to our starting point three, but at least we're not at five, right? At least we're not at five. Then we have our panic phase. So these uh, two victims, having seen someone killed right in front of them, will panic. So I'm gonna roll a die for each of them and it'll tell us where they go. Okay, a three. So this one, because this has the number three right here, will go into here. A five, okay, and this one panics and goes into here because four to six, they go this way. If you roll a one to three, they go this way. So that's our panic phase. Great. Okay, that could have been worse, though it wasn't, like, great. I'm not sure we're going to get this boat thing happening, but let's see, I guess. Okay, now it's us. And I think we stick with our original plan of trying to move into here and picking these people up. So I think we want to try and sprint, because otherwise we can't move. So let's try and sprint. So I roll two dice because we're back here on our track. I just need one success to be able to move two spaces. And that's all I want to do is pick these people up and move into the garage with them. So just one success will do me right. I'm going to play my close call to re-roll a horror die. Or re-roll both for, oh my gosh, this is so bad. Should I spend the two time? I'm going to spend the two time to re-roll both of them, just to give ourselves better odds. Come on. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna spend my other close call in two time. This is so, this is, I'm off on such a bad start. This is such a bad start. I can't believe it. Ah! Well, that's my turn. I've done literally, this was a horrible turn. I'm just like stuck. I'm like panicking or something in the foyer and I can't like, I don't know why, but it's terrible and I can't do anything and this is bad. There's no point in playing my search because I can't search here, so I'm just going to hold on to it. That was such a garbage turn. I just did nothing. All my dice mitigation. I should have just discarded two cards and, like, guaranteed the success rather than, like, risking it with the close calls. I should have just discarded both close calls and guaranteed the success. Um... I only draw an event while on the machine now when the when the tarot cards tell me to. One does not happen every turn. Exactly, Shadowner. Uh, turn one was a classic horror movie mislead, filling me with false confidence. That's exactly what happened. Well, everyone's going to die, and it's fine. Uh, so, <laughs> this is still in my hand. These don't go back yet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So we have only have two time to spend to pick up cards. So I do get all of my zero cost cards back, which is good. 
Oh, Icarus says, with all due respect, this game is so much more entertaining when someone with horrible dice luck plays it. That's, yep, yep. Sci-fi Alex says, I house ruled to give myself extra re-rolls. Ooh. Hey, Linnea. Oh, thank you. So I have two to spend. I just, what should I spend the two on? Sprint or guard? I don't think the monsters are going to get to me. Uh, the monsters, the killers on this turn. So I think getting a sprint just to be able to have more movement is probably the way to go with my last two. So I'm just going to do that. And then these go back into the market here. Um, this comes into my hand. Let me check my hand because there's a hand limit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I should be good. I believe the hand limit is 10. I believe. Let's double check that. I don't think it's seven. I think it's 10. Yes, it is 10. So that's that. So now we need to do the killer phase. And I tell you what, luckily, so killers target victim or final girl, whoever is closest, and attack, but none of them are in a space with anyone. So that's good. <laughs> so now we just need to flip over a tarot card and see what the next horrible thing is. Of course it's a minor dark power. So now whenever I do damage, the health has to come from here first. So let me put two extra. It's like all my health tokens being used. Two extra health tokens, oops, go on here. So we effectively have gone from 18 to 20 total health. This is so hard. <laughs> Hi, Fuzzy Logic. I hope you're having a lovely holiday. Nerd explaining exactly. Nerd explaining says, I like how Paula knew right where to go in the rule book. Like she has checked that every time she's played. Yes. Are there things that y'all do like that where you're like, every time I play, I just double check this one rule. Uh, so at the end, this is a coordinated attack. At the end of each killer phase, Resolve the following effect. The active killer will change. That's what that K symbol is. They'll target final girl or victim, move, and attack. That is very bad, and I need to do damage. Oh, my gosh. How am I going to do this? I might lose this one really quickly this time. I don't know how well I'm going to survive this. Usually, the first time I play scenario, it's, it's not good. I haven't, like, figured out, like, the strategy, and it's just, like, this is not, so far, this is not going well. Yeah, everyone's like, yeah, every game I double check something I know is true. Camelisk says, usually starting set of stuff, like gold or something. No matter how sure we are, we always check. That is true, Icarus. Last time I said I thought I was going to lose really fast, and then I ended up winning. But this is, this is rough. And now it's the end of the killer phase. So this happens. This minor dark power happens. So the active killer changes. It goes, let me see what direction it goes. Red on top, that means it goes up. So this wraps around. So this moves up and wraps around to the bottom. So it's, uh, well, I think it's Zeke, this freak, <laughs> who is now the active killer, who is going to target, move, and attack. Oh, no. So it's coming into here. So he's targeting the victim because the victim is closest. He's going to move one. And he's going to attack this victim, which does kill them. Uh, which means the bloodlust goes up one. So now their movement is two. They're getting faster. It's not good. And no one panics because no one is no one else is currently in a space with the killer. So the panic phase doesn't happen. So now it's me. I got to say, I got to... Oh, boy. <laughs> let's try to walk. No, let's try to sprint. Oh, no. Let's try to sprint on my turn. 
So I'm going to play that. I rolled two dice. And if I just get one success, I have lots of cards in my hand to be able to discard if I need to. Um, yes, they do split up, which will help, I think, Arden and Henry. <laughs> Despair makes you stronger. Thank you, Camelisk. Thank you for that. Hey, Jason. I hope you had a great Christmas. Okay, sweet. All right, one success. I'm not going to discard any cards because all I need is the one to be able to move up to two spaces. I don't need to move three. I want to stop in the garage. So I will move. Now there's a door into the laundry room. I'm going to pick up these two. Uh, where do I want that one? These two victims because two will come along with you and go take them into the garage. We're going to stop in the garage. And because I'm in here, I can pick up these discarded tools which is a good thing because we're going to be able to use those to craft something later. So, oh, I have to spend a time to pick them up, which makes sense. So now this comes down to five from six. So this will go into my backpack. These kind of look like they're in my backpack already, but that's just because I don't really have room for them anywhere. So just know these are not in my backpack, but this one is. Now I do want to try and do a search while I'm in here, maybe try and pick up this knife. Oh, I do need to spend a time for the sprint. You're absolutely right. Thank you so much for catching that, Woodsy. Appreciate that. So now I'm, I'm at four time. Thank you for catching that. Okay, so we're going to try and search. Where is it at? Oh, it's right on top. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's a new playmat for season two, Icarus. This is the playmat I have. I feel like it's probably the same. They probably have a new one with this print corrected but I think it'll be the same uh, otherwise. Okay, so I'm gonna try and search. So again, I'm gonna roll two dice, and one success will get us the top item, and two successes means we can look at both the, the top two items and then choose one. Um, oh, wow, sweet, okay, one success. So we're gonna look at, we just get this top item. We don't get to flip over what's here, um, but we just get the knife and that's okay. I'm gonna put that in my hand right now. So we have a knife in my hand. Uh, and that means if we do an attack, this is going to buff our attack by one additional damage, which is great. That's very good. That does cost me a time, so I'm down to three time. You can discard cards to get time back, can't you? My coffee went cold, everyone went cold. I think I can, let me look. Yes. Uh, at any point before the action phase ends, you may discard as many action cards as you wish in exchange for plus one time each. So that is something we might end up doing this turn. What I'd love to do is walk these victims into the driveway. So let's try and walk now and see what happens. So again, two, we're rolling two. Oh my gosh, those are just two fails. So I can't do anything with that. Those are just straight up fails. I just really want to save those victims. I'm going to get buffs for doing it. I really feel like, I feel like that's a really important thing. I'm going to try, I think it's worth spending the card to try and walk again. Oh, wait, but I need to do the fail. Oh, well, when I fail, I can move up to a space. I'll take a damage and lose two time. Oh, we're just going to do that. That's what we're doing. Of course, that's what we're doing. So fail, I can either just lose two time, but it's worth it at this point. I'm going to move one space with them. I'm going to take a damage. So one of my health is gone. And I lose two time. So I'm not going to have a lot of time to spend right now, but I think this is worth it. So these, because I'm in an exit space with them, they will immediately flee. I go, get out of here. So I've saved these victims, and I'm very happy about it. So now we can put them on my card here for special powers. I can get two time back, which is nice. Uh, I'm definitely doing, I kind of think, though, I'm just going to do... These two lower the horror. Yeah, Jenny should not have worn her stiletto heels today. <laughs> hey, DM Stretch, how are you doing? I think we're going to lower the horror twice to get us down into three dice territory. 
boom, boom. I could have put a victim here to get two time back or take the guard reaction card or move one space or heal, but I think this is I think this is worth the investment. So that's what that's what we're doing. Is there anything else worth doing while we can? I have a short rest. I could try to heal. But I can also, I think I might. So if I discard some cards, I could, I could discard my short rest and my weak attack and get some time back to get something else. I could get this distraction card, which could be cool. I wonder if I should do that. Because otherwise I only have one to spin. What's going to be in my hand next turn? Walk, fo focus, and focus. Because I do think next turn I want to start coming around this way to try and get over to here and start dealing some damage. Maybe I shouldn't discard the weak attack, actually. Maybe I'll just discard my short rest to get one time back. And actually what I'm going to do is... Mm, I'm going to spin that too to get my guard. Because if I'm trying to move over to them and get in the space to start attacking them next turn, it might be useful to have some defense. So I'm going to do that instead. Okay, so that's what I've done on my turn. Let me put all my cards back. So my zero cost cards again go here. Search goes here. Sprint goes here. And that's my turn. I've reset my timer. And now it's the killer phase. Da -da -da -da. So again, they target and attack. None of them are in a space with anyone, so that won't happen yet. So we flip over a terror card. Don't let me forget, I have to do this minor dark power. Bye, rabbits are coming. Thank you for being here. What happened while we were gone, it says. Sorry, I'm not showing you the screen. What happened when we were gone? Place three new victims at the boathouse, and now we draw an event card. Oh, boy. Where's, oh, my gosh. The boathouse is full of people now. Three new victims at the boathouse. Oh, gosh. They went out on the boat and came back. That's what happened. They're like, why is everything so weird here? Look at all of that. That's a lot of people. And now we draw an event. Booby traps. Don't leave the house. All victims inside the house panic. <gasps> oh, no. Any victim leaving the house is killed. Well, luckily, I don't think our neighbor is going to end up leaving the house, but these two might because they're at an exit. So our neighbor is safer now. Maybe the neighbor will come my direction. That would be great. But these two are probably dead. Let's start with the neighbor. Okay, so they all panic. Great. So two to four, that goes into the kitchen. Five to six, it goes into the foyer. And anything else, one, they won't move at all. Okay, so that's a three, so they go into the kitchen. And now we need to panic the two people in the kitchen. And they've already panicked, so we're not gonna roll again for them. So this one, five. They, oh my gosh. Does this, does this increase the bloodlust? When they die this way? I think it does. I think any time a victim dies, it increases the bloodlust. Oh no, they come out and they die. Every death, yeah. Oh my gosh. So that comes up one. If we go again, I lose my three dice, y'all. Y'all know, look, if, we, if it moves up one more time, the horror increases and I lose my three dice that I worked so hard to get. Mm. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with my camera switching today. Stupid panicky victims, what part of don't leave the house confused them? They ran right into a booby trap and they died. Okay, maybe we'll roll a six. We probably won't though. Or one or two and they won't go anywhere. A two! Oh, they stay. Okay, they stay. No, no. Oh, no. They come here. They come into the foyer. Foyer. I don't really know. I don't know. 
Okay, so that's what happens. Because of two, they come into there. Okay, so they don't die. So that's good. That, I'm happy. As happy as I can be. Okay, so this event discards. <laughs> and now we do our minor dark power. At the end of each killer phase, resolve the following effect. The killer uh, moves up, so now it's bag head. They target, move, and attack. Okay, so let's count here. So they're two away from the boathouse. They're three away from this person. The boathouse has so many people, they're going to go that way. So they move. Oh, no, they move too. I just want to roll three dice. <laughs> they move two now. One, two, and they kill. They kill one person. And now all these boathouse people are going to panic. Poor boathouse people. And this moves up. And the, <laughs> the horror level goes up once. I'm back to rolling two dice. Three steps forward, two steps back. Two steps forward, three steps back. And now these all panic. So let me just pull them off to the side so we can see a little better. So three to six and they'll all just run away and anything lower than that, they stay. So let's see, I need to roll this four, four times. The property values near this house must be nose diving. A two, okay, that one stays. A five, this one runs, boop. Oh, they ran right into the killer, dumb victim. A five, okay, one more. A two. So two stay because they're hiding out of panic. They're frozen in sheer terror. And two run right into the arms of another killer. <sighs> yep. Yeah, panic in the boathouse. Almost like panic at the disco. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So, yay. <laughs> That's that. This minor dark power is killing me. I really need to get over to here and like try and do two damage so that I can get rid of that minor dark power. And speaking of, it is my turn again. So, first we're gonna move. I should have grabbed a sprint. What was I thinking? Because I'm only gonna be able to move two spaces. That wasn't the smartest thing in the entire world. Well, here we are, here we are. Yeah, three new people shows up, one gets killed, two friends flee, the other two hide. It's bad. All right, we're gonna try and walk. We're about to unleash their dark powers the next time they kill. I just can't, mm, I should have gotten a sprint. All right, two dice. Oh, two successes. So I can move two spaces, I lose a time. I wonder if I should just grab the person in the foyer instead. I just don't know. I don't think I'm gonna make use, be able to make use of this neighbor with the boat. I just don't know how it's all gonna happen. But what's the point of grabbing them? I, mean, I could try and save them. All right, I'm gonna go porch, foyer, to pick up this person. And that's the best I can do there. Cause I'm not gonna be able to get over here to attack anyway, so I might as well try and save someone. And then I'm gonna focus, and then I think that's it. Should've tried to focus first, but it's fine. All right, two more dice. One success, so this will lower one, but I lose a time. And then I'm not gonna do anything else. That's it, I'm gonna hold on to these cards. I get back my zero cost cards that were in the uh, action tableau. And I have four to spend. And I'm going to get a sprint for two of them. How do I build this obliterator? I need wood and rope and nails. I'm never going to be able to pick up all this stuff. 
I have two more. I'm gonna get the two close calls. Let me count my cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm good. So that's these two. So this comes back up to six. These discard back. And now we do our killer phase. So now this does activate, this happens, their killer power first because they two of them are in spaces with people. This is so bad. It's just really bad. I think a lot of people are gonna die. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save enough to get to my special ability with Jenny, but. Okay, so first we start with the active killer. So we'll start with Baghead, who will kill this one. This goes up and reveals the dark power. So this flips over. No remorse. This is such cool art. Roll a die at the start of each upkeep phase. If the result is greater than the number of killers, take a damage. Oh, no. It's a power to attack, but I think they only attack one person at a time. So the power two is only going to affect me. They're not one attack is killing one person. If they were going to attack two people, it would be two knives. So that doesn't, um, it's a power to attack, but it doesn't transfer over. So now we do this one who kills this person which increases the bloodlust again. Oh my gosh, why did I even waste my focus card? The horror goes up and this comes back up from, <laughs> it was here on one. I keep trying to get these three dice and it just keeps getting taken away from me immediately. So now it's there, back to two dice. <laughs> ah! We haven't even flipped over a terror card yet. This is so hard. <laughs> okay, now we do our terror card. Place the active killer in your space. They will hunt you. Oh no. <laughs> While the machine says, for my studies, I have concluded three dice is a pipe dream. <sighs> All right, so baghead leaves this person, hunts me down in the foyer where there's a victim and he attacks me. So you can see here, place the active killer in your space, targets the final girl and attacks. I have a guard though, so this will do two damage to me, but I have that guard card and I am going to play it. It's too bad I lost those three dice. So I'm playing my guard, which means I can ignore damage or reduce damage. I just need one success. And because I have my knife, oh no, retaliate is the only one that can do damage back. Oh, poop. Okay, but that's okay. I'm gonna try and avoid taking this damage. So let's just roll these dice. One success. I reduce damage by two. They're only doing two damage, so I don't take any. So that is very good. <sighs> That's something. Okay, now the killer, the active killer goes down. So now it's Zeke. They target the final girl and but something can, oh so God, yes, so yes. So Zeke targets me and moves. Their movement is two. So they go one, two. Now the active killer changes again. So it goes down again. So it wraps back around up to Trish who targets the final girl and moves. What's the shortest path? One, two, three, four. One, two. I think they're gonna end up in the kitchen with our neighbor, because that's the shortest path. Well, three, four. No, because they can come in this way. It's just three. Yeah, that's how they're gonna go, which is bad. I don't think we're gonna be able to capitalize on our boat key holding neighbor. So one, two they're in there oh no oh yeah they kill they kill now because of our stupid minor dark power at the end of each killer phase resolve the following effect the active killer 
targets, moves, and attacks. So there goes our neighbor. Frank Scenario, thank you so much for that subscription. Being here for 13 months on an 11 month streak, I appreciate you so much. Hello, past payer. Thank you for joining us. <sighs> All right, well, they target either final girl or victim, whoever's closer. They're in the space with the victim, our poor neighbor. Yeah, rest in peace, wacky neighbor. They move, they don't need to move because they're in the space with them, and they attack. So that will kill, oh my gosh. <laughs> they kill this poor neighbor, Rhonda. The bloodlust goes up, so they're now moving three. This is, this is escalating quite badly. Look at my bloodlust tracker. It's about to be at the top, and every time it moves up, I'm gonna discard the next tarot card, which is gonna get me closer to the finale, which gets me closer to dying. Oh, 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 wait, 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 oh, you're so right. Hold on. Chat is letting me know. This is still gonna go up one, but the active, yes, the active killer does change. So the neighbor lives for now because this doesn't mean active killer acts. It means active killer changes. So this moves up. So it's actually Zeke who's in. <gasps> oh no, it's going to move. I was like, wait, are we safe? No. He moves here. Targets final girl or victim, whichever is closer. Moves and attacks. I think they attack victims before they attack the final girl. Let me confirm that. I'm pretty sure that is true. Rhonda, we helped you, Rhonda. Let me just confirm. The first, uh... First, a victim and final girl, whichever is closest. Unless otherwise specified, always target the closest option. For each knife icon, the killer will perform one attack. Each attack will have one target. I will, uh, the killer will always attack victims in their space before the final girl, unless the final girl was specifically indicated as the target. So yes, this victim goes first. So much for saving this person in the foyer. Help me, Rhonda, help me get this knife out of my heart. So this victim dies. Not our, Wow, we have a lot of victims are dead. Y'all, I just want to show you. Look at all these. <laughs> a rule that helps the final girl actually become the final girl. Exactly. So, but the bloodlust now does go up to there, and it is still bad. I'm in a space with two killers right now. Come with me if you want to live. Oh no, a killer shows up. <sighs> okay, I think that's the whole thing. That was that was a, that was rough. Okay, it's me now. Hi, it's me. Only have one attack. We're gonna try and focus. And then weak attack and 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 maybe and uh, yeah maybe run out of there I don't know maybe just get um, retaliate if I can because wolf this is bad okay we're gonna f oh uh, yes we're gonna focus because I want three dice come on there we go all right, one success means we lower the horror, but we lose the time. But that's okay, because that means now when we weak attack, we're rolling three dice. Please give me a success so that I can do a damage with an additional damage with my knife. Come on. Okay, one. And this was on five. One success. Do I want to discard a card, two cards to make it two successes so that we don't take the damage? I don't know, is that a good thing to do? I'm just gonna play the close call and just re-roll and just see what happens. 
Okay, no. I meant I will take the damage. I will just take the damage. I hurt myself attacking, but I do two damage to them because one success, one damage here, and an additional damage with my knife on my weak attack. So that's two damage, which gets rid of the minor dark power. So that's brilliant because the damage comes off here first. So that goes away. And then the minor dark power is gone. So this, that's very good. So that's over. That's over. Phew. Okay. So. <sighs> that's something. Now, technically, the one you're attacking, and I didn't specify which one I was attacking, becomes the active killer. We're just going to say I was attacking Zeke because he was the active one. Uh, but the power, the it all comes off of the minor dark power no matter what. So we've done that. And then I think, do we run out of here? Or we just hold on to everything. We just hold on. I'm holding on to all these cards. I have five to spend. I'm going to get a retaliate for four. Now should, actually, should I discard something to get... have two. Get another guard if I do, which might be worth doing. I'm actually going to discard this other close call to have given to give me another. I'm doing this a little out of order, but to give me another time to spend so I can pick up this guard as well for two. Okay, then that happens here. These are going to go back into the market. So I have a little protection and also I can retaliate, which will help. I would really like the chance to craft something, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get over to all those things. Okay. But that's that. That's my turn. Now we do our keeler phase. Oh, at the start of the upkeep phase, I have to roll a die because of my, uh, my minor dark power. If the no result is greater than the number of killers, so if it's four, five, or six, I take, um, I take a damage. It's not. Okay, good. Three. Uh, or sorry, this is my regular dark power. The minor dark power is up here. This is just my normal dark power. So this is okay. I don't take a damage because I rolled a three and we have three killers. So we're okay there. Killer phase. Oh boy. Oh, now our neighbor dies. Because all killers do this. <laughs> oh I'm about to take so much damage okay this is fine it's fine it's totally fine it's uh, everything's fine no problem it's fine so first we start with our active killer which is Zeke who is going to target me and attack he's going to do two damage but I'm going to retaliate which means if I roll I have three I have three dice to roll still thank goodness if I get two successes, I ignore all damage. If I roll one success, I reduce damage from the attack by two, and I'll do a damage. I can do damage with my knife. So hopefully I can do some damage to these people. So to these killers. Okay. Two damage or three damage? Is it worth discarding cards to make this a two success? Oh, sorry. Y'all can't see what I'm doing. I apologize. Um... Unfortunately, Camelisk is asking, if you get all the killers down to one health, do you get three extra dice in this scenario? No, they don't stack. The extra dice on the tokens don't stack, unfortunately. But if you have one, you get that extra die. Um, so even if only two, two are at full health and one is down to one, I'm getting the extra die. Yeah. Let me see what my cards are. I just don't know if it's worth doing three, one extra damage to get rid of two cards when I kind of need them. Walk and sprint, healing, and my guard. I, I don't think I'm going to discard. I don't think I should. So I'm just going to do my one success. I'm reducing the damage from my attack by two, which means I'm not taking any damage. 
and I'm going to do one damage here and then one from my knife. So I'm doing two damage to Zeke, who stays the active killer because he is the active killer. So I'm going to take these two off. So that's something. It's something. And the reason I'm doing that is because now a baghead is going to attack me and I don't want to lose my guard. I wish I had another retaliate, but there's only one. So now I'm going to try and avoid taking the damage from Baghead. So I'm going to play my guard. Again, I just need one success, and I'm still rolling three dice, so that's something. Okay, one, one success. I reduce the damage by two, so I'm not taking any damage. I'm not doing any damage, but I'm not taking damage. So that has worked out very well for me. Now Trish goes... And Trish, sadly, now uh, our neighbor Rhonda dies. So it would have been cool to rescue people from the boat, but we, we weren't able to make it happen. Bloodlust goes up, so now doing three damage and three movement, which is the movement that they had before. I'm gonna have more of my cold coffee. I'm very sad about Rhonda. And now we haven't even done our terror card. Oh my gosh. Now we flip over our terror card. This is so rough. They can't get in here, right? Oh no, place two new victims in each bedroom. Holy moly. What happens if we run out of victims? Maybe we start pulling from our dead people. I've never had so many victims on the board before. And then the horror goes up. No. Well, it was nice while it lasted. At least we got a couple three dice rolls out of it. But now we're back up to two. Okay, that's it. I need to do some attacking. Seriously, and I have no... I think I need to run away. Yeah. I'll have a sprint, walk, and short rest. So I can't attack because I don't have anything good in my hand and all these people are going to die. Run away. If I can get wood. What can I do with discarded tools and wood? I need nails. Oh no, rope. If I go to the boathouse, I could get rope. I wanna craft a cool item. Oh, that snare's pretty cool. It stops movement. Sorry, I was just silently reading my crafting cards. Oh man, making a nail trap would be so good. Listen to this. The nails are so far away. But maybe we can still get them. So the nail trap, if wood nails and discarded tools, you may place a nail trap token on your space, one per space, during the action phase for one time. If an enemy enters a space with a nail trap, discard the token and the enemy takes one damage. So, yeah, Rhonda takes the boat key to the grave with her. That's selfish. Just a guy passing by. So selfish of Rhonda. All right, well, let's try and sprint. Let's try and get out of here. Let's try and get some materials or some items or something. Maybe we can run over to the boathouse. I don't know. Let's roll two dice. Let's see. Just see how far I can move. Okay. With one success, I can move up to two spaces and spend a time. I am not going to spend any cards to upgrade the other success, so I'm going to go... One, two, bye bye And then I'm going to, I'm just spinning all my cards. I'm going to walk. I'm going to try to walk. 
That's one success. So that puts me in here with this. That's one space and a time. Oh, I need to spend time for my sprint as well. So I've spent two time now. So I'm in here. I do get wood just for stopping in this spot. So I have wood and discarded tools. It spends me, it costs time to pick it up. But I think it's worth doing. Let me just shift these things up. The die is cast. Should I try and heal? I think I'm gonna hold on to this card. It would be cool to be able to save this victim, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to, you know what I mean? So I think I'm just gonna hold on to my short rest. I have three car three to spend. I can't afford any of my cool attacks. So what is gonna be in my hand next turn? Let me just take a look at what's gonna be in my hand. Focus, weak attack, focus, and walk. I think I'm gonna get a close call for one and a sprint for two. And hope that that's okay. I don't know, it may not be good enough, but we're doing our best here. Walk, sprint, guard. Retaliate, retaliate is such a good card. Okay, that's my turn. So let's take a look at what the intruders are going to do. They target and attack. Well, none of them are in a space with anyone right now, so that won't happen, so that's good. Oh, I didn't, uh, upkeep's at the end. Okay, so we'll be okay. So now we'll flip over Terra. Is Tammy home? Place the killer at the porch. And then raise the horror. Okay, so our active killer is Zeke. So Zeke is going to come out and come onto the porch here. So he's coming after me. Oh, sorry, you can't really see, can you? Apologies, everyone. And then the horror goes up one. So now we're here. That's okay, we've kept, I mean, the horror's been manageable at least. Um, we've been able to have a couple of, um... oh, I guess technically I should be, oh no, these are, so these tokens are what we get if we craft, if we craft the item. Anyway, it's fine, okay. Um, who knows what I'm talking about? Ay, 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 ay. We don't have to do the minor dark power because we got rid of it, so that's good. And now I roll a die for our dark power power, where it says, oops, let me show you here, at the start of each upkeep phase, if the result is greater than the number of killers, take a damage. So I still have three, so it needs to be four, five, or six. One, so we're okay. So that's where my low dice rolls uh, come in handy. Okay, it's me again. Let's take a look at what I've got going on here. Let's walk. Let's see if we can get into the boathouse, pick up some rope, and grab this victim. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I don't know. You know, it, it's hard to know, but we're only rolling two dice. Oops. <gasps> hey, a success. That's cool. So one success means we move one space and we spend a time. That's all right. So I've spent the time. I'm going to move the one space up with this victim comes with me into the boathouse, which means I can get rope because I've stopped there. So I now have wood, discarded tools, and rope. Oh, that, that cost a time to pick up. Let me see. Wood, discarded tools, rope. I need nails to get the obliterator. And the nails are way up over here. But that would be pretty cool. I can make a snare. I really want that nail trap. And if I spin the wood on the snare... I won't be able to make this the the nail trap. 
I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold out for either the nail trap or the obliterator. I'm going to try and get, um, try and get the nails. So our exits for fleeing, there's a question in chat about it. So we have one here. We have the driveway here. And then we have a space up in the corner here that is led to from these two spaces. Can you make a flamethrower? Only if I was on the Nostromo. Okay, so now I'm going to try and sprint because what I actually want to do is take these two victims and just bounce them out this way. I know that's not moving in the direction of the nails, but I think it's better for me to try and save people if I can. And if I can get a good sprint going, I should be able to make that happen. Hello, Weave and Roll. This is the game Final Girl. It is a solo only board game where you are playing to be the last girl, the last person standing in a horror movie. So we are in like a cottage in the woods kind of scenario with some uh, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre almost type uh, people coming after us, except they don't have a chainsaw. But there's three of them and they're kind of like backwoods looking people. We did have an exit uh, at the lakefront while a machine is, uh, is pointing out, but then uh, I let the neighbor with the keys to the boat die. <laughs> so, all right, let's try and sprint. Two is all I need. I need one success. I think it might be worth discarding cards to make this a success. I'm gonna discard a close call and a focus and just like guarantee, rather than re-rolling and risking, I'm just gonna try and guarantee the success here. So I'm discarding those two cards to turn this into a success. I can move up to two spaces. I do lose a time to do it, but that means that these two victims go one, two into this area and they will flee automatically, so. These two, we get to put on our card. Okay, this is this is good. This is this is an improvement. So I think I might heal and get two time back. So I'm gonna put one here to get a heal. Beep. And then I'm going to put one here to get time. One, two. So now I have five to spend, which means I can get like furious strike or retaliate or something like that so that'd be pretty good because I've done that I actually think I might discard my short rest to get one more time so that I have six to spend so right now in my hand I have weak attack and focus I wonder actually if I should spend my focus instead I'm going to my focus instead of my short rest. And I'm going to get, for four, I'm going to get Furious Strike. That leaves me with two. And for that, what kind of movement am I going to have? Not much. I'll either get Sprint or Guard. I kind of think I should Sprint. Yes, I will get a walk back next turn. Yes, I'm absolutely going to be getting a walk back, Chad is pointing out. Uh, but that is not, it just doesn't give me as much movement as a sprint would. So the guard, they are coming. I guess I'll get a guard. I just feel like I'm going so slowly um, that I'm not going to be able to do all the things I want. But that's just how uh, life is. So, okay. So let's put back my, uh, oh wait, not yet. Then I get this walk, yes. Now I'll put back my zero cost cards. My sprint goes here. Close call, focus, okay. We're surviving a lot better than I thought we were going to. That's for sure. Hey, Kumulipo, how are you? Alrighty, what's happening now? It's the killer phase. So they do their deal. Target and attack, they're not in a space with anyone. So that doesn't happen right now but we do have to pull this terror card and who knows what's gonna happen then.
It was wearing a mask. The horror goes up one. Uh, if there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next tarot card. Well, there are victims. So I'm going to, you can't see it, but I am moving the horror level up one to it's at four now, which is the highest it's been all game. Because it's pretty horrifying. Um, and then the active killer is going to go down. It's going to target a victim, move, and attack. So the active killer goes down. This wraps around, so it becomes Trish. She hasn't been the active one in a little while. She targets a victim, moves, and attacks. So how do these rooms connect? I think, actually, she's closest to the ones out here, outside in the yard. So she's going to move there. And that's where the most are anyway. So she moves here. This might be good because they might panic toward my direction, and that might make it easier to save some of them. Um, and then she's going to attack, so that'll kill one of them which increases the bloodlust. Oh no, the horror goes up twice. That means it goes from four to six. We are in a really bad spot now with the horror. Really bad spot. I am barely surviving Kumulipo. we get down to just one why did i didn't i just discard a focus i didn't realize it would go up like four spots in one turn this is bad because if it goes up one more i'm down to one die oh my gosh <laughs> all right well that's that um we now panic our victims because they just watched someone die in front of them so let's see where they go. A five. This one. One to two, four. Oh, this one stays. Great. Great. You're dumb. Oh my gosh, they both stay. I rolled a five for both of them. And there's nowhere. Look. None of something these. Yes, oh yes, oh yes. What are my, oh, my alerts are still on. Oh, here I am. I thought I had turned them off. Well, YouTube, you get to hear them. Thank you so much for that subscription, Kestrel. Oh, no, you're right. Oh, good, good, good. The five is here. Oh, that is connected there. Oh, phew. Okay, so they both run into the bedroom. I was like, that is about to be so bad. There is. The five is here. Chad is helping to point that out. I missed that. Uh, but yeah, it's connected right there. So we have a bunch of people huddled in the bedroom. That's fine. They're totally safe in there, but also that is not running toward me. I cannot help them. And that is still not good. How, what the heck am I gonna do? I don't know. Okay. Well, it's the upkeep phase. I better roll a die. If it's uh, four, five, or six, I take a damage. It's a five. So there's that damage I just healed. Goes away. Yay. All righty. Let's take a look here. I demand to speak with the lighting director. <laughs> so we have, oh boy. walk where the heck am I gonna go let's just see how many spaces I can move and then I guess I can figure out like where does it make sense to even try to go this is a this is bad this is pretty bad wow I rolled two upgradable Ugh. All right, I'm going to discard two cards. I'm going to discard my short rest and my guard. This is so dumb. I'm just making, I feel like I'm making bad choices. To make one of these a success, which means I walk, jeez Louise, one space, that's it? No, I'm not doing that. No, I think maybe we just use this turn to like gather things because this is, I can't, if I fail, I can lose two time. I can move up to one space and take a damage and lose two time. No, I don't want to do that. I'm 
I'm staying. I'm staying where I am. I'm not doing anything. I'll just lose the two time. I'm going to hold on to these cards. I'm not doing anything else. I'm spending all four of my time that's left to get this retaliate. That's my turn. I have all these cards now. This is very bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. That's it. That's the turn because I just need to prep. I just need to like gather myself and prep. Um, and that's that for the moment. Um, so that's, that's my decision. That's the choice that I've made. Honestly, I'm kind of hoping that Zeke is going to come over to me to make it easier to do some attacking and have retaliate now. We'll see. Okay, none of them attack anyone yet because they're not in a space with anyone. But let's see what happens when we flip. Please, I need the horror level to not go up again. Well, there it goes. There's all my dice. Uh, uh, I think it's a matter of time here, everyone. That's pretty bad. There's someone out there. If there are no victims on the board, there are. Okay. So the active killer is going to target victims, move twice. They're not going to attack, but they're just going to get scary in there. And then the horror goes up and I lose a die. <laughs> Wall in the machine. Okay, okay, cool, cool. While you're prepping, we'll just be over here in the house with the murderers dying. <laughs> Look, it's called Final Girl, not Save All the Victims. You know what I mean? So they're going to move into here. They're not attacking yet. And then my horror goes up one, which means I only have one die to roll. And that is very bad. Now I roll to see if I take damage. If the roll... If the result is greater than the number of killers, it sure is. Oh my gosh. I'm down to three health. I think I'm gonna be dead soon, everyone. I think I'm gonna be dead. Okay, now it's me. All right, let's come after Zeke. Maybe I can get something back here. Maybe I should focus first. First, I'm gonna try and focus. I only roll one die. Oh, that's a success. That is lovely. Okay. So that cost me a time, but this comes down one. So now I get to roll two dice. So that is, that was really lucky. Okay. Now I will walk. Oh, sweet. Okay. Two successes. So I lose a time and I move two. One, two. Okay. Come at me, Zeke. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to Furious Strike. So two dice. I can possibly do three damage here and lower the horror. I need at least one success. So here's 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 what we need. Here's what we're going. Two successes. I'll do two damage plus one with my knife. The horror comes down one, which would be great. Actually, if I could do three, I'll get him down to one health. And then I'll get an extra die no matter what. So that would be great. One success is one damage. The horror comes down one level. But then my entire action is done. I have to stop taking actions. If I get no successes, I hurt myself. The horror goes up and I'm, my turn is over. So... Come on. All right, I'm discarding two cards to make this one success. Woof. So I'm gonna do two damage with my knife in here. It's not quite enough, but it's something. And then the horror goes down one and then my turn's over. So not great. But I do still have my retaliate and my guard. So I can still spend, obviously. Um, so this walk isn't going to come into my hand. I have four to spend. I 
wonder if I should get an improvise or a planning. Um, this planning means if, I, if I'm successful at my planning, I get extra dice for the next horror roll or extra successes added to it. I think is what this means. So I get some auto successes, I believe, with planning. So that's actually probably the way to go. Because that would be pretty sweet. Right? Am I interpreting this properly? I think I am. Because it's not just have extra dice to roll that has, like, stars on it. Which I think means you get, maybe? Or maybe I get extra dice to roll. I think I get extra dice to roll. I don't know, it's fine, I'm taking it. I'll look it up in the rules. I'm sure it'll tell me. <laughs> it's just roll extra dice. <laughs> but I want it to be successes. I want it to be auto successes, but that would be too good. It would be too good. So, it is, it's just roll extra dice. It's fine. Oh yeah, here's the symbol. Roll one additional die. If it didn't have the dice, if it was just the stars, it would be successes. Okay, that's what I'm taking for four. Furious Strike goes away. Here's all my zero cost cards that go there. All right. That's it. That's my turn. So, oh boy. People are going to start. Children are dying. People are crying. Uh... Here we go. Oh, and yes, I uh, attacked Zeke, so the active, uh, he becomes the active killer here. Okay, so all killers target final girl or victim in their space and attack. So we'll start with Trish, uh, who will target and attack here. So this one victim dies, and uh, the bloodlust goes up. This is, I'm, um, this is, we're getting toward the end of the game here because I'm going to start discarding tarot cards. Oh no, I only have two left anyway, y'all. <laughs> we're going to be in the finale very quickly and I don't think I'm going to survive it, but that's, a, that's okay. This game can be so brutal. And now Zeke targets and attacks me. Now maybe I can do some damage back, okay? So I'm going to retaliate. I need to do two damage. I have to shoot. I'm going to discard my walk and my guard. That hurts to get one success so that I can reduce damage from the attack by two. And also I'm going to do two damage back. So the knife adds to it. So that will potentially kill Zeke, but I am going to take one damage from it. So I take a damage. So I'm down to two. I wanna have more, Zeke more, 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 takes more, this damage more, more, and more, this damage, more, which means more. we... Oh wait, I wait to reveal this. Hold on, it's different in this version because there's all these killers. So, Elevation Games, thank you so much for that raid. Oh, I could probably discard the boat event, but oh, I'll just leave it for now. Um. Okay. When one of the killers still has its final black health token and loses its final health, and there's still at least one other kill on the board, the phase doesn't immediately end as it normally would. We lay the dead killer on its side, change the active killer, and finish the current phase. When the phase is done, check the dead killer's black final health token. If the token is blank, the killer is truly dead and should be removed from the board. If the token is health, however, replenish the killer's health per the normal rules, replacing the black final health token with a white one and stand the meeple back up. So this we will check at the end of the phase. So this is just going, I'm just gonna move it up one. So it's now bag, bag head is the active. Um, so we'll reveal at the end whether or not Zeke is truly dead. 
Now we flip over a tarot card. There's blood everywhere. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so the active killer moves down. It currently skips over Deke. Deke. Zeke. There's no way I'm, I'm dying. There's no way I can beat all these people. Uh, currently skips over Zeke because he is presumably dead. It comes to Trish, who will target, move, and attack. She doesn't need to move because she's in a space with victims. So she attacks. This one dies. The horror level goes up one, which means we, y'all, we discard the next terror card, which means we're going to be in the finale. And then it comes back down to here. Uh, I haven't gotten to the panic phase yet, Shadow Honor. Uh, the panic phase comes after I finish the killer phase. Um, so the terror, and then the horror goes up one. Which isn't great. Okay. Now they panic. So all the victims in a space with a killer panic so it's just these two so we'll do those yeah i'm pretty sure i'll confirm but i'm pretty sure yes killer phase resolve killer action draw a tarot card and then we do the panic phase so almost but not quite so we'll roll for this one let's see where they go one i think they stay i'm pretty sure yeah five six two so that one stays like an idiot. What about the other one? And the other one stays too. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're hiding in the closet. They panic and hide under the bed, but it's not going to do them any good. Uh, not going to do them any good at all. This is bad. <laughs> Um, too, too bad I, I chose Ginny for her awesome uh, upgrade power, but I haven't been able to save enough victims to even get it. They're too busy making out to have noticed the killing. Well, that's a good way to go, though. Have I done everything? Okay. Killer panic. Now we're in upkeep phase. I am not going to be able to craft anything awesome because I'm going to be dead soon. So let's see if... Um, oh, first we reveal. Is Zeke actually dead? Here's the big moment, everyone. No! <laughs> He's not. But the good news is, he pops back up. <gasps> and the good news is, he gets this token as his final health, which means I do have um, one additional die. So that's something. Ay. All right, now let's see if it's four, five, or six, I take another damage, and then I have an additional, and then I'll be down to my last health. Y'all, I'm hurting. I'm hurting real bad. Yeah, I take a damage. I'm down to my last health. So I'll now be rolling two additional dice. <laughs> I think I've done all the things now before my turn, which is the end, and... um yeah let's see if i can take zeke out at least before i go where are my cards why do i only have two cards did i forget to oh because i discarded during retaliate oh boy okay well uh let's play some planning i'm gonna roll four dice heck yeah and see if i can get more extra dice for the next horror roll. Wow, four dice and I got one success. That's the most Paula thing that's ever happened. So I'll get two extra dice for my next horror roll. So I'm gonna roll all six dice for my next horror roll. And I lose a time, but whatever, it's my last stand. Weak attack. Shouldn't you have the old zero cards back? No, these were not, um, it's not time to bring these back yet. Uh, these are the ones that I spent on my last turn, so I'll get them back this turn. Unless I messed up, but I'm pretty sure um, that that is correct. 
So now I'm going to do my weak attack. I can possibly do two damage. And actually take Zeke out. And then that will probably be my last stand here. I need everyone to just sit with this. I rolled six dice. And I got straight up fails on all of them. believe in myself enough that's right I didn't uh, I didn't believe in myself enough I I would say I can't believe it but turns out I can believe it I can believe it <sighs> well I'm not meant to survive this one um there we go that was it that was the end uh <laughs> I got no successes, which means that, let me show you here. Um, oh, no, I lose a health and my turn's over. I might die. I have hurt myself. In fact, I knifed myself. Is this how I go? This is how I go. This is my last, this is my last health. Uh, I guess let's see if I accidentally stab myself or not. <laughs> yep, I sure do. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens in the final moment. I go, no, if I'm going to go, I'm at least taking one of you with me. I take my knife. I shove it toward Zeke. Zeke goes, <laughs> grabs my arm, twists it back toward me, and stabs it right into my own heart. As the blood pours from my mouth and I fall to my knees, the light leaves my eyes and I think it wasn't supposed to go this way. And that is how we did not become the final girl today. The intruders kicked our butts. The last thing you hear is the other victim screaming. Poor Jenny. She didn't quite she didn't quite do it, did she? Um we almost got to her. Her power would have been so good if we could have made it happen, but we needed to save two more people, and we just couldn't quite do it. That was pretty exciting, though. Pretty exciting. So, yeah, this is um, The Intruders uh, and Wingard Cottage, which are from Season 2 of Final Girl. And a big thanks to... Van Ryder Games for sponsoring this uh, stream. I will have this up on YouTube uh, in a little while. So if you would like to see it, if you came in late to the stream and you want to see it on YouTube, you can do that in YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, the last thing you hear is, oh, there are the boat keys. Exactly, Big Turk. Exactly. <laughs> I like this. Um, R. Dan Henry says, chance of all fails on six dice is less than one in 500. Welcome to the Paula Deming dice curse. Did you have fun? I did. I really like playing this game. So even when you lose, it's so thematic. It's just really, I really enjoy this game quite a bit. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for watching YouTube. Thank you so much for being here. If you would like to see these uh, live, you can join me at twitch.tv slash Paula Demi, uh, currently streaming board games on Tuesday mornings, but the schedule is always uh, subject to change, especially depending on when you're watching this YouTube video. So come over to twitch.tv slash Paula Demi and check out whatever the current schedule is, or follow me on Twitter at Paula Demi, because I usually tweet about schedule changes or when I'm going live. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, and we'll catch you next time. Like the video and subscribe. That's what I'm supposed to say. Bye, everyone.